Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Patty Ann here and I'm here for day two of our seven days of SVGs using a free software. Now, you can create these SVGs in the free software no problem whatsoever. You will need a different, so different version of it to save it for your Cricut machine, but hey, it's free to try it out. So, Here's an example of an SVG that I made previously, and you can find this in one of my previous um, videos that I've down up put into YouTube. So this one's really cool. It's got a little stand for it, and it's actually double-sided. So all the pieces are cut out of cardstock this time on this one, instead of it being vinyl, like our first one, the Harry Potter one. So join me, and we're gonna get started, and we're going to do baby piglet. Okay, as you can see on my screen here, I already have my baby piglet. I went ahead and found him on Google, just like I did last yesterday. Uh, I grabbed him, I right clicked on him when I found him on Google and I said copy. And then I came in here and right clicked and said paste. And that pasted him right in here where I wanted him. I also found another one that had the coloring so that I knew what colors to make him. So I right clicked on this one copied it and right clicked here and pasted it in here so I have both of them just like this. So if you remember from yesterday to make SVGs the first thing that we do is we trace. So you come over here to this little icon that looks like a piece of toast. It opens up the trace panel. So I'll click on that and then I'm going to say select the trace area which means select the area that I want to make into an SVG. I'm going to click on that and I'll just select Piglet just like that. So he comes in perfectly just like um, yesterday's did, the Harry Potter one. So all I have to do is click on the word trace right down here and I'm ready to go. So now I can move this box out because I don't need it anymore and delete it. And I'll have to remember to delete this before I save it. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and do this. First thing I'm going to do with this one now is I am going to go ahead, notice that there's a black outline all around Piglet and in between these colors. So what I could do is I could change it to black right now by coming up here to where the cross hatches are and getting black, which is perfect except for one thing. Now I'm going to need to do another step. And if I do this step with this being black, I'm not going to be able to see the parts very well. So let me show you. If I click on him to select him and come up here to object at the very top on the left, release compound path. When I click on release compound path, that's going to break apart all the little pieces that make up Piglet and it's going to put little squares around him, around each one of those pieces. But it's also going to change them into the color that I have selected right now, which was black, right? So watch, if I release the compound path, everything turned into black and it's really kind of hard to see the little different pieces here. So let's go back and let me show you the way I'd really do this. Okay, so we're back here after we had just gone ahead, come over to the trace tool and I said select the trace area. Then I traced it and I got rid of that box that was behind it, remember with Piglet on it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on him again but this time, instead of making it black, I'm going to make it a light color that I probably won't be using in Piglet at all. So I'm going to come up here to the hash marks again, and I'm going to change them to maybe a light purple, because I know I'm not going to use that in Piglet. So now what I can do is I can come up to Object up here at the top left, and whoopsie, Object, and release the compound path. Again, that's going to put little boxes around all the parts that make up Piglet, but I'll be able to see them more easily now. Release the compound path. Okay, can you see when I click on this that now I'm able to click on each of these individual pieces because they're all made up of boxes. So I'm gonna start with his ears because I think that would be really easy. I'm gonna click on this ear and notice when I come up here, it looks like it's a purple color. Well, obviously I don't want it to be purple, whether I'm using cardstock or vinyl. So I'm going to click on that purple color and I want to make it the color of the piglet sample that I have right here. 
And I could try to guess which color it is here, but instead of doing that, all I have to do is get this eyedropper. Once I have that eyedropper I can clicked on, I can move over here, and anything that I go over, it, that color is going to get sucked up into my eyedropper. Look, can you see how it's changing colors when I go over different parts? And then I want you to look up here at this purple swatch. When I click on his ear, once I have the eyedropper selected, look what's going to happen to that swatch up there. Click. Look at that. It changed it to the pinky color, and it also changed his ear that color, which is exactly what I wanted. So I'm going to get his second ear, and I'm going to come up here to the purple color again, and I can use the eyedropper again if I want to, clicking on it and grab the color, or the very last color that I used will be right here up in the upper left hand corner of all of these colors. So I can just click on that and it makes it the proper color. It appears as though his nose is the same color, so I'm going to click on his nose. Whoops, I got to click here on this selection tool first. And then click on his nose and come up here and just grab the same color. So far, so good. So what I want to do now is I'm going to do his face and his arms and his feet. And as you can notice in the one over here, those things are all the same color. So I'm going to grab all of those parts over here on him at the same time. So I'm going to click on his face, hold down my shift key, which is going to allow me to select more parts. Select this arm, still holding down my shift key, get this arm. Shift key is still being held down, this one and this one. And let's pretend that I thought those were all the colors that I needed that were the same. same. So I would come up here again to the color swatch area, and it's not this pink color, it's a different one. So I'm going to grab the eyedropper tool again, and once I've clicked on it, I can come down here and grab the color that is his face, his arms, and his feet. Okay, check this out. So as you can see, I missed something right here, but that is not a problem at all. I can just select this part of his leg or foot, hold down my shift key and select this piece. And then again, come up here to the color swatch and here's the most recent color I used. So I can just click on that. So he's looking really good. The other thing that I can do is I'm going to change the color of his outfit. So I can click on this piece hold down my shift key, this one, this, 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 and this, and I can imagine that I think I have it all. Now I know that I've missed some, so watch. I'm going to come up here to the color swatch area, and that's not the color, and that's not it, and I don't want to guess. I'm just going to use the eyedropper again and get the exact color like that. So now you can see the pieces over here that I missed. And to get this little piece right here, I might want to scroll in. I like to go up here and use this magnifying tool. To me, it looks like a bug. So I click on that, and then I hold down my mouse key and just drag over this, and it makes that section larger, just like that. So now it's going to be easier for me to get the selection tool here and select this part of his outfit, hold down my shift key, this, 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 and that. Perfect. So now we know we've already used that color and it was the most recent one we used. So if I come up here to the color palette area, it's the one on the very left. There we go. Let's scroll back out so we can see better. All right, it looks like there's only one thing left we have to do and that is to get black in these all these areas. Well, do you remember when we made the original thing purple? This piece? I can now turn, change that purple piece. Oops, let me let me just hit Control and Z to black. And so a lot of the black outlines show through perfectly. So I was thinking that this piglet was going to be one of the very very easiest ones again, but there is a little something else we're going to have to do with him because notice that some of the things on him didn't turn black the way I thought they would. So what I need to do is this. I'm going to click on this eye, hold down my shift key, click on the pink color here, 
and come over here to a, another panel that we're going to use. It's called the Modify panel. It's right, right here. It's a rectangle and a circle together. And once I've opened that, again, what I did was I selected the eye, held down my shift key, selected his face. Now I'm going to hit the word subtract. And what that did was it subtracted the whole of his eyeball right out of there so that the black underneath can show through. Okay, I'm going to hit Control Z so I make sure it's back exactly where I want it. I'm going to select this eyeball, hold down my shift key, get his skin, subtract. Again, I'm using the Modify panel if it wasn't open. It's right here. And say Subtract. Perfect. So I can do a few things at once instead of each one individually. I can hold down or click on his eyebrow. Whoopsie. Click on his eyebrow. Make sure that you get the box around the part you're trying to select. Hold down my shift key. Get this purple part of his nose. Get this part under his chin and get his lips. And hold. And then while I'm still holding down my shift key all this time, I'm going to click on his face and say subtract. Now look at that. Isn't that perfect? Let's scroll out for a sec though. You know the funny thing is I don't know for sure what color his mouth should be. So I don't know. I guess I'll just, shall I make it black? If I want to make it black, let's see what it will look like. Hold down, get, grab the purple, hold down my shift key, get his face and say subtract. Okay, yeah that looks fine. So that's all I needed to do. And check this out. When I cut this out of vinyl or cardstock, I'm not going to have to cut out little tiny pieces like these to glue on top because look, they're already cut out of this piece, allowing you to see the black piece underneath. The same thing with each of these. I'm not going to have to cut out a little skinny black line to go under here. So there's another thing that we like to do, and I can get rid of this one now. Delete. There's another thing that I like to do before I save this for any uh, cutting machine, whether it be my Cameo or my Cricut, is I like to do this. Come way up here. There's a little thing that looks like an artist color palette, and it says select by color. I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to click on by fill. Because right now it says select by color by line. I want it to be by fill. And this shows all of the colors that are in my Piglet Baby. Well, right now, if you'll notice, I can change, I can take all these pieces apart like this, right? But I don't want them to come apart like that. I want them to stay together, and I want them to stay exactly where I where they are. So, and by the way, just now I hit Control and the letter Z, as in zebra, on my keyboard to undo what I just did. I could have also come up here to these arrows, to the undo arrows, okay? So what I'm going to do now, again, I came up here to the artist palette, clicked on that, and I changed it from by line to by fill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this first one right here. When I click on this, it's going to put a box around all of the colors that make up my tiny little piglet, and it's going to select them all. So watch, select, okay, you see that? There's a box around each one of these little pieces that are that color. So what I can do now is come up here to Object, Make Compound Path, or you could just do Control E on your keyboard because that's a shortcut. But you're going to make a compound path. And what that's going to do, it's going to make it as if all these pieces are just one item and they'll stay together. And this is perfect, especially if you want to cut this thing out of vinyl. So I'm going to say make compound path like that. Now look, when I go to grab this, it all stays together as one path. So now I'll go to the second color, click on that, and it put little boxes around every piece of his outfit. So again, I can come up here to object, make a compound path, and they all stay together just like that. The other thing I want to do is the next color. And you'll want to make sure that you do this, especially if you're using Cricut Design Space. This makes it a lot easier over there. 
but I'll go to this color next. It got the nose and the ears object. Make a compound path. There we go. And I don't really have to do it for this because it is only one piece. If you get confused and you do it, it's no big deal because it's not going to let you try to do it because it's just one thing. So now we can put all these pieces back on here. And to use this SVG in Silhouette, I'm going to show you first Silhouette and then Cricut Design Space. Okay, For Silhouette, I would just say Send. And right now it comes in as line color or simple. I would change it to fill. I'm going to cut by fill colors, okay? So I would uncheck everything. And I'm only going to have it cut one thing at a time. So I'll start with this color right here. And I can move that if I want to up in the upper left-hand corner because that's where it's going to cut. Wherever you put this on the mat is where it's going to cut. So you have to make sure you have vinyl or cardstock there. So I could cut this only and that's all that's going to cut because that's all I have checked. And I could change it to cardstock and I could change it to cut and I could change it to the tool is, um, well I can't detect one right now because my machine's off, but I use the auto blade and then these are the settings for it. And then I would just say send for this. After that's done then, I can move this off the mat if I want to. Uncheck this one because I'm done with it. And now I can do this color. If I don't move this color, it's going to cut right there. So I better put it where I know there is cardstock of that color. So if I put it here, again, I would have the tool, I would have the action as cut and the tool as, um, and no tool is detected because as I said, my machine's not on, but I would use the auto blade. I would say send, have this cut, and then probably take that off the mat. Uncheck this because I'm done with it. Then do this one. Again, changing. When that's done, I could move it off and then do the last one. I would uncheck this and do the last one. So that's how you would do it in Silhouette, whether you have a Cameo 3 or a Cameo 4. For Cricut now, I'm going to show you again. This will work perfectly if you have the Business Edition. If I try to save this, I'm going to group it all back together. And if I go like this and I go to File, Save As, Save Selection As, Save to Hard Drive, and I'll just name it baby piglet okay and say okay let's see do I already have that as an SVG I, let me save it as something else well I already have it baby piglet we'll do test for cricket test for cricket I'm going to show you what happens baby piglet test for cricket okay so here's what's going to happen if I try to open this in my cricket without saving it as an SVG, but rather saving it as a silhouette file. Okay, so I'm going to go to File, I mean New Project, Upload, Upload an Image, Browse, and Baby Piglet Test for Cricut, Open. It says you have selected an unsupported file type. Select a different file type. So I'll cancel that. So this is why you need the business edition to save everything for Cricut. Again, you can take all seven of these classes and learn how to use this software and see if it's something that you think you would like for Cricut. If it's something you would like for your Cricut machine, I welcome you to use the link that I have down below. I get a little tiny commission from it, very small, but it's a really good price for it, and it just helps me to be able to make these things for you. Anyway, if you decide you want to get the business edition, I'm going to switch over to that now to show you how you can save your piglet then. So right now in this edition, the Freea version, all you can do is file, save selections, save it to your hard drive, and you're only given these three options to save it. 
These are silhouette um, files. They won't work for your Cricut or your Scan and Cut. However, if you've purchased the business edition, that one-time fee, and I'll show you that now. I'm going to view it in the business edition. Now, if I come up here to File, Save Selection, Save to Hard Drive, Baby Piglet, look at the options I'm given now. I can save it as an SVG. I can save it as a PNG. I can save it as a JPEG. Okay, so those are really files that you'll want to be able to use for your Cricut. So I'm going to save it as an SVG this time. And I'm going to say OK. So now watch when I try to open it in Cricut Design Space. I'm going to go to Upload, Upload an Image, Browse, and I named it Baby. Is that it? No, that's the one that was um, the silhouette file. So I just named it Baby Piglet. And look, I'm going to show you. This one, if I hover over it, look, it says Type Silhouette Studio Document. This one, if I hover over it, it says type SVG file. And that's where we're making SVGs. So you want to be able to save it as an SVG for your Cricut or your Cameo Any Machine. So click on that and say open. Not going to have any kind of warnings. Just save it. And then we can upload, insert it. Comes in perfectly just like this. And these all grouped together. We can ungroup them, but we don't really even have to. I can just say make it. And he's automatically going to be put on the mats. There's the black piece, those pieces, and those. And so that would make it very easy. Let me ungroup it. So what you would do is this. You would cut the black piece first, probably. It doesn't matter which one's first. Take your black piece, and then on top of your black piece, you could glue all of your pink pieces, or if it's vinyl, they'd all stay stuck together if it was HTV or regular vinyl. And then you could take these pieces and glue those on or use vinyl, and then this. So you would just layer everything. And again, the beauty of this is you don't have to cut all these tiny little circles and eyebrows and little chin thingies. They are cut out of this color so that the black backing shows through and it's gorgeous. They're perfect, you know? So that's pretty much what I did on my Winnie the Pooh. If you'll look right here, you can see that there's the black outline all around him. And these are the colors of cardstock that I cut out. And I did not cut out the little nose. You're seeing the black, the inside part. Didn't cut out the eyebrows. You're seeing the black. This is an SVG, and see how easy those are to make? I love it. So, I hope you're enjoying this seven SVGs, seven days of SVGs, and you'll join me again tomorrow. Remember, each day they're going to get progressively a little teeny, weeny, tiny bit more difficult. Not a lot, though. So, hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you. Hey, if you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and hit the bell. Also, remember, Check out my links down below if you're in the market to buy anything or if you'd like to buy the business edition of this software. Thanks. Bye.